<laughs> We've been talking about Hillary Clinton and Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren are campaigning together this morning in Ohio, campaigning together. Clinton leads Donald Trump by five points in one new poll and 12 points in another. She also made comments yesterday about Britain's vote to leave the European Union. Nancy Gibbs is the editor of the aforementioned Time magazine, and we are pleased to have her. Welcome. Thank you. So tell me whether you and, and all those reporters at Time magazine believe that there's some real connection and what the Brexit vote shows is something that perhaps the Clinton campaign should be worried about. Well, we've heard a slightly changing response from her from with each day, but I think it's so easy to overread that somehow these populist and nationalist furies have now all been unleashed and this means that the forces that have been driving the Trump campaign are now going to have similar revolutionary output here. The United States and the UK are very different countries and I would even say you know, the EU makes a perfect faceless villain that is, you know, determining how bent your bananas can be. And, and it, it, um, it, you know, the UK is not withdrawing from NATO and from the UN and from the IMF. They are not giving up on being a, a global But Nancy, power. is that the point? I mean, the point is, is immigration. We just heard Mel just say what drove the, the uh, Brexit vote was immigration. What is driving the Trump campaign is immigration, even and, though they're different solutions. They are, and yet, obviously, the whole the immigration um, environment in Europe generally and here are dramatically different. I think, you know, the, the non-white population of the UK is something like 13 percent. It's mm -hmm. twice as high here. Yeah, but are the fears different? Mm -hmm. I think the, the fears, and we've seen this all through history, you can, you can play to specific individual fears, but I don't think, it's a very long time from now until November. Do you think either candidate benefits benefits from the, the Brexit, Brexit yes. Vote. Do you think either candidate benefits in this country? Well, right now, it's interesting listening to the Clinton campaign almost saying, you know, we're going to dare to be boring. We are going to, yes. we're going to promote experience and stability and, and frame everything that Trump said at the, you know, in the wake of the vote and since then as being, this is about risk and revolution and rebellion. And do you really want all that much change? Because if it turns out the markets continue to be very wobbly and that this looks like something that even a great many in the UK may have second thoughts about, that they are positioning themselves, that he was, you know, he reacted instantly and thoughtlessly in saying that this was a great thing and that maybe this much change isn't gonna look as appealing um, to people here as they watch how it unfolds mm -hmm. in the weeks to come. Politico is reporting after interviewing some 50 prominent Republicans, mm -hmm. House members, senators, governors, that almost nobody wants to speak at the Republican National Convention. We've covered these conventions for decades. They are usually an opportunity not only to focus on the nominee, but also to highlight the new stars of the party, to give them a prime time moment for exposure. It appears mm -hmm. that many of them are not going to even be at this convention. It, it's really remarkable if you remember that you know Barack Obama was you know got his start at the 2004 convention with one big mm. speech and and Bill, yet Bill Clinton did as well with a very long speech with a very long speech yes. uh, was not long. as helpful to his career at the time but <laughs> but you know why would we think that this convention is going to be like past conventions when nothing about this campaign has been anything at all like past campaigns you mm. knew that no matter what the RNC imagined going into Cleveland that Trump was going to want to to script and orchestrate and stage manage this from beginning to end. If he ends up speaking every night, would we really be so surprised? No. Oh, and I think he is, yes, he is. He's planning to speak every single night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then Thursday night, he's planning to, you know, uh, appear from somewhere and maybe from a battleground state. So it will be four straight nights of um, broadcast coverage of Donald Trump. And I think, you know, with, uh, the idea that maybe he could, he could reveal a running mate on live television in prime time. I mean, nothing about well, this. Well, he does. Be... He does know good TV. He does he know does. good TV. Let's talk about yeah. Hillary Clinton and Elizabeth Warren campaigning today. What do you make of that? They say she's on the short list for VP. Do you think that's true? Doesn't it tell you everything that this is the first time they will be campaigning <laughs> together? Uh, it also tells you a lot that this is Hillary Clinton's third trip to Ohio in as many weeks. Yeah. Donald Trump just named his campaign manager in Ohio last week and hasn't been there since March. Hillary's back for the third time. I, you know, Where's I think, dead even? I know if not, the Republicans are a little ahead. I think it'll be fascinating to see the two of them together. To see, to see them together, I think the notion of her there there is no good political or policy argument that I can see why Hillary Clinton would put her on the ticket. It isn't like she needs to win the state of Massachusetts. Um, the personal chemistry between them, the fact that it took Warren so long to endorse her, mm -hmm. um, I think rubs her the wrong way. I don't think she ever wants to read 
the sentence that you know many <laughs> you, we often read about you know wishing that the ticket were flipped and that the other person were uh, on top. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of reasons, and not least the one one of the things that Hillary Clinton has going for her is that so far Wall Street has not exactly opened up their wallets to support the Trump campaign, mm -hmm. and the one way to guarantee a consolidation of uh, opposition in that sector to Hillary Clinton as yeah. if Elizabeth Warren were her running mate. Well, a lot can happen between now and November. And we got a front row seat. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you <laughs> Thank very you. much. Thank you.